All right, hi guys, what's going on? So today we are gonna be going over Bahá'u'lláh scattering again, right? So we sort of set up the problem last time. We talked about the bookkeeping tools for spin of our incoming and outgoing particles. And we sort of set up what the, uh, uh, the second order approximation is that represents our two vertices in our Feynman diagram. So in this video, we're going to continue with the second order approximation, uh, or we're going to continue with this scattering amplitude that is a Bahá'u'lláh scattering amplitude. Um, so let's get right into it. Before we get into it, though, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll, now let's get into the content. All right, so we are talking about Bahá'u'lláh scattering today. We let's. I actually want to... Um, talk about something really quick before we get into this. I recall, this is what our diagram looked like. This is what our diagram looked like. What, we have two vertices. Two vertices. So what does our black box configuration look like? Our black box configuration looks like this. Right, and we have our outcoming particles and our incoming particles. And we have two um, we have two vertices going on in this. We have two vertices, so that means this is a second order approximation to a Feynman diagram in which we have a po positrons and electrons. So this is so the Bahaba scattering is really just a second order approximation to uh, to a scattering process. And so there are there are third order approximations, there are fourth order approximations, there's second, there's zeroth order approximations. But what we're doing is this is a specific phenomenon that we're studying because it's particularly useful when it comes to actually applying um, uh, actual tangible things, right? right? We, you, we, we can actually make sense of um, positrons interacting with electrons uh, and exchanging photons because we can actually measure this kind of stuff. And so uh, I just want to put this in a sort of a broader perspective before we dive into the, the weeds of the calculations. So let's get to the weeds of the calculations now. Um. So we ended up at a point where we had uh, this big long guy right here, right here. And we had this A, I, and B, J's. And we said that the A, I, and B, J's were bookkeeping tools for our spin. We also established this relationship here, right? And these two relationships here in the last part of our video, in, in our last video. Okay. Uh, what we do here now is we collect... Um, so our, this here, actually, we should have a Q, oops, I'll zoom in. So this guy should be a Q. Um, yes, this guy should be a Q also. Okay. And this guy should be a Q, right? I don't know what I was thinking when I was doing this. That, should, that guy should be a Q. And so this guy over here is brought out here. All of our exponentials, so our KQ2 exponential is brought into this guy, and our KQ1 exponential is brought into this guy, which are these guys here. We can, uh, we can now see that this guy and this guy are going to go to delta functions normalized delta functions and that's going to help us get rid of these in integral factors again that's Fourier analysis we've done this before this should be uh this should be you should be breathing in this kind of stuff now like this should um really come naturally Ho hopefully at least come a little bit naturally to us now and so we can also take out uh one of these guys and cancel another one with uh, this guy here. So we get this, 
Then we get this. Let's detour a little bit because this is kind of interesting. Actually, let's not detour. Let's keep on going and then we'll come back to it. Because, um, yeah, the, the, let's just keep on going here before we go to that picture that I, that I had down. So, S3, okay, so what's S? Um, so S3 I have to find down here. This is the third component. So K1 and K2 are vectors, right? Um, and so this is our, S, our S3 and it's squared. So essentially what this is, is it's the third component of the sum of these two vectors, right? Because we, we're calling S our Mandelstrom variable, right? Our, our, Mandelstrom, our Mandelstrom variable of uh, our incoming particles. K1 and K2, okay? And we're bringing this out as a constant because it is really just a constant. And then S, right? So S is um, square root of this guy, okay? And so we get to this point here. So, so you might think, okay, this is a little bit weird because we have these S's now. Um, these S's are, uh, essentially what they are is we, we've kind of just changed Q to S, right? So if, if you, if you think about Q, what Q is, it's, um, it's a form momentum, right? It's, this is a Q is, um, a spatial, the, the Q3 is a spatial form momentum. Okay. Q QL is um, the space-time for momentum. So S squared is the space-time for momentum, whereas S3 is, a sp is the third component of the spatial part of our form momentum, right? So this is, this might take a little bit of time to um, chew on, but uh, it's really just changing Qs for Ss. Okay, and so what the book does is it goes into... Um, we get from here to here by saying that um, the spatial part is much smaller than the, um, the space-time part, right? So the spatial... That means this guy was, is very small... If this guy is very small, this thing is essentially zero, okay? Because something very small squared is, again, very much smaller. So if, so, so, so if this is just one, then we get this, okay? Okay, so if S squared is the square of the incoming particles, we're defining it to be this, right? So, we then have, so this is a little bit weird also. We can square it all out. And if um, it's if it's traveling really small, then this is the approximation we make again. This is the mass of the particle of the electron um, and the positron. Which is a little bit weird, also because he did. Uh, they don't. They say that these two are the same. Okay. There's no difference between the two, and then, so we add these two guys up. That's two. These two guys here, we break apart into their spatial and temporal part. Whereas here, it's kind of already done, right? The three is the spatial is a spatial part of the spatial part, right? It's the third component of the spatial part. As again, my apologies for the dog. <laughs> Hi. And so... <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so we left, we're left here. And... Uh, we come to this point, right? So in the... We break these two guys up into their relativistic uh, representations, right? We have uh, the, the mass part plus the spatial part, or the temporal part plus the spatial part. Um, and then 
But this all really boils down to these guys going to zero because our spatial part's moving very small. So if the spatial part's really small, then the temporal part compensates for that. And we get uh, four times the mass squared. So in the limit, that uh, in this limit, this guy here essentially goes to We'll write this down, i e squared 2 pi to the 4 times 4 m e squared. So in a limit in the non-relativistic limit. That's our answer, right? So this is, <laughs> we've come to the point where this is what um, the second order approximation is. We can see there's a difference between this second order approximation and the second order approximation for the Yukawa scattering, right? Because the Yukawa scattering, we had two terms there and both terms uh, accounted for um, the spin configurations of, of these guys or not the spin configurations, we, we had the two terms that accounted for the incoming mass of the two guys. Whereas here we don't really have a term that looks like that. We have a term, at least within the relativistic limit, that is really all just a bunch of constants. Right. Anyways, let's come back to this picture really quick, because um, these, spin, these spin bookkeeping guys are interesting we are looking at if you recall this this is a this is the completeness relationship All right so we talked about the completeness relationship a while back and we talked about how the completeness relationship was very good at selecting out the um component of, of the momentum of a particle um that is orthogonal to the direction of its travel and uh and leaving out the other two components. And so when we're doing this with spin, right? so the book actually does a pretty good job at describing exactly what's going on here with the spin. We're doing the same thing, right? This, we are dealing with particles whose spin is aligned with the z-axis. So here's our black box. Here's the z-axis. Here's our x and y-axis. What we're doing when we are using this, this notation with the AIs and the BJs is we're bookkeeping for the spin, right? That's what the AIs and BJs do. We're bookkeeping for that spin. And then what we're doing with this completeness relationship is we're taking, we're taking the spin that we, book, that we bookkeeped and we're, we're taking that spin and we're aligning it with the direction of travel in the Feynman diagram, right? So that's what this picture looks like, right? So you have these two incoming particles. So these two guys here, um, and they have their spins. So our two incoming guys have their spins right, these, these two brown vectors, and we're picking out the components of the spin that are aligned with the z-axis as they're engaging in um, the scattering process. And th th that's what we're doing, right? So essentially that's all I want to talk about with this Bahaba scattering. Um, and it's a very interesting phenomenon that happens that occurs in, uh, actually will, can occur in nature. And it's um, the end of our uh, of this one of the last chapters, one of the last big chapters in the book. Um, so I actually want to take a few minutes here to talk about what's coming up, because uh, as I've posted before, we're coming to a near end with this book. We have a couple of chapters left. This is probably the last seventy pages-ish of this book, and we're actually going to fly through them pretty quick. Um, 
And so you guys have spoken. You have, uh, and this is, you, you, you guys have spoken, and most of what you guys have said is that you are interested in physics from symmetry with an emphasis on Lie groups and Lie algebras. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on next. Uh, and with all of that being said, though, I am going to start picking up the pace a little bit. Uh, and also working on other playlists because I, I want to get more content out there for you guys to listen to. And this, I think, is going to be the point at which I move back into Patreon. So I've been thinking about doing this. Um, the only reason uh, I would, I'm would i thinking about moving back into Patreon is just to give you guys early access, right? So I, I work hard at making these videos, at preparing them, uh, reading all the stuff, organizing it. And so if you guys want to contribute uh, to this kind of content, then uh, please uh, do. Uh, nothing's stopping you. If you don't, again, nothing's stopping you. I, the, the aim here is to get, uh, pr get the content out there, get it on YouTube, get it on Patreon. Uh, and those of you who contribute on Patreon will get early access. So... Uh, with that being said, if you like this kind of content, uh, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.